CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. For those of us who grew up listening to the chug-chug of steam and the lure of that mournful whistle in the night, the romance of the railroad will never die. Nowadays, of course, trains are different. Yet the clickety-clack of the wheels remains the same. And the whistle still speaks of strange and faraway places. I hope the romance still lingers long enough for me to bring you this story. The whole point was, you see, that it didn't matter where they thought they were going because they were really all dead. (laughs) That ain't true about us, Mrs. Winsome. I can assure you, we're all very much alive. You know, Mr. Conductor, you're the very last one in the world I would trust to tell me the whole truth. Our mystery drama, Journey to Somewhere, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Norman Rose and Carol Titel. It is sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Why are so many people buying Buick's new Century? Well, it depends on who you ask. Mrs. Marsha Resnick? It holds the road and it drives really smooth. It's nice. And Mrs. Phil Jackson. I like it because it's roomy. And Mr. Jackson, he can't even begin to tell you all the reasons why he likes their new Buick Century. (laughs) I really wouldn't know where to start. But then that says a lot about Buick's new Century and why it's drawing a crowd at your Buick dealers. On a certain day, in a certain year, not so very long ago, a certain train pulled out of a terminal in one of our major cities and headed north. It was traveling what was little better than a spur track. There were few stops along this line to Skeffington Junction, and just as well. For weeks, this part of the country had lain gasping in the clutch of one of the most bitter winters in weather department history. For the record... The locomotive was number 711. A cosmic joke, considering all the bad luck this train carried with it and was heading into. Sounds almost like a ghost train, doesn't it? I beg pardon. Uh, Maybe I should beg yours. A silly sort of remark, I guess. What I meant was all this snow, it uh, muffles the sound, sort of a dreamlike quality. I was thinking the same thing, looking out the window... A world smothered in white silence, swallowing up, absorbing the sound. (laughs) It is a ghost train. (laughs) The sad opening gambit for a conversation. Uh, Forgive me, my my name is Henry Thorpe. Uh, How are you, Mr. Thorpe? (laughs) I'm Julie Conrad. I suppose I should say was. Oh, now, don't tell me that you're a disembodied spirit. It isn't something I can joke about. Not after 23 years of marriage. Oh, I'm sorry, I... You're widowed. No. No, it hurts a lot worse than that. Divorce? That's the polite name for it. It can be a dirty business, Mr. Thorpe. Just for your information, if you've never been through it. I haven't. My my wife died. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Well, it's some time ago. Do we... Does one make adjustments? Well, I guess it's up to the individual. I have not been roaringly successful... Or I suppose I wouldn't be on this train. Nor I suppose would I. It might be interesting to pursue just what that means. I beg your pardon, sir. But could the lady please take care of my patient? And could you help me? Oh, get the conductor. Oh, dear lady, what is it? My patient is in the seat just across the aisle. A few seats back. She's not ill, just just elderly. Her name is Mrs. Winsome. Mr. Thorpe, help this woman... I'll go and take care of Mrs. Winsome. Yes, of course. Uh, Now, what can I do for you, uh, nurse? We'll need the conductor. Would you get me to a hospital? I'm having, I believe, an acute 
I'll pin the slate as a touch. All right, all right. Now, now take it easy, nurse. Mrs. Winston? Oh. Yes. Yeah. Now, how did you know my name? Well, now, I'm sitting a few seats in front of you. Your nurse told me your name. Did she? Oh, but what happened to her? Well, I'm afraid she's not feeling too well. Dear me, that's rather strange. Why? Because she's supposed to be in charge of me. Well, you aren't well? Of course I am. Just the way they feel. They? My daughter and that dreadful husband. They just wanted to get rid of me. So they stuck little Miss Brown with carting me off to be incarcerated. To be what? Locked up in a nice, safe nursing home. Mrs. Winsome, could we talk about you a little later? Of course. Everyone always wants to talk about me a little later. But somehow, the time never comes around. Who did you want to talk about? Oh, just for the moment. Your nurse. What's the matter with her? Well, she thinks she may be having an appendix attack. Oh, dear. Then we must stop the train immediately. Well, I think they're discussing it. I mean, um, I, I see uh, Mr. Thorpe is talking with the conductor. Now, what are we going to do? Well, it ain't but a few miles to Lambert up ahead. Uh, I'm going front to tell the engineer we'll be making an emergency stop. Well, do they have a hospital in Lambert? Ooh, Doc Prouty has a clinic I reckon I'll have to do. We'll, uh, we'll phone on ahead and alert him. Uh, I'll uh, be right back. He said there is a doctor. Yes, that's right, nurse. Well, I hope that solves me. Now, what am I going to do about my patient? Well, surely we can find accommodations for her, too. No, you don't understand. She can't manage alone. And besides... Oh, oh, oh. She should be gotten to the sanitarium as soon as possible. But where is the sanitarium? It's Skeffington Junction. It's about six or seven minutes from the station. Do you know the town? Well, I was born there, but I left a long time ago. D do you remember Little Falls Ridge? With the big Indian teepee on top of oh, it? Oh, bless you. That blew down years ago. Oh, I, they've got the sanitarium there instead. They've only... Now, oh. you, you just try to rest. And don't worry. Oh. I'll get your patient there for you, okay? That is a load off my mind. Now, if you go by my, my purse, there's a big envelope beside it with all the papers. Now, would you bring it, please? Well, I don't like to leave you alone. No, no, no. I'll be all right. I want to check and make sure you have everything. Oh, I think we must be coming into Lambert now. Won't be a second. Uh, oh, miss, miss. Yes, sir? Uh, this, uh, this lady isn't feeling well. Would oh. you mind keeping an eye on her for just a minute? Oh, well, I don't know if we can... Please, it's an emergency. Oh, okay, sir. I'll do my best. I'll be right back. Uh, ma'am? Uh, excuse me, but, uh, this man asked me could I help you with... Is there anything I can do? Oh, 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 oh I'm, sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. You heard oh. it. If, if you just tell me how I could help you. Ma'am? Uh, lady, lady, wake up. Please. Oh, no. Oh, mister. Oh, where did he go? Uh, hey, watch it, watch it, lady. Don't, don't fall off the seat. Hey, hey you. Hey? Yeah, you. Come here, will you please help me? Uh, help well. me. What, what, what's the matter? Your mother passed no, out or something? No, no, she's not my mother. She's just some woman that's sick. Now, here, I hope you get her back on the seat, will you? Well, why not? Uh, 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 give, me, give me a lift right yeah. here, okay? Okay. Oh, there, she's all right. Hey, that's a big idea, the train coming to a sudden stop like this. It's coming into a station, I guess. Mm, I don't see nothing out there but snow and snow banks. Hey, where'd that conductor go? Well, search me. He, what's eating you, whoever you are? Nothing. I just don't like... I'm, I mean, well, why should we be stopping here? I've... What's the matter? You act like you had cops on your tail. Hey, I never said that. Okay, miss. Uh, and you, son. Uh, thanks for helping out. I'll oh, take sure. over now. Hey, uh, you know why we're stopping here, mister? Yes, to get this lady to a hospital. Uh, what's happened to her? Well, I, I think she just sort of passed out, mister. Uh, Thorpe, Henry Thorpe. Oh, yes. uh, no, let me see. Sorry. Oh, she's... Uh... Now she's breathing all right. Oh, Maybe it's a blessing she won't feel the pain. All right, thanks again. The conductor and I will handle the rest. Yes, yes, sir. Hey, uh, where are you sitting? Oh, right over here. You mind if I sit with you? Well, I don't know. I want to ask you something. What? How come you thought I might be, uh, taking off from the cops? Maybe it takes one to know one. What does that mean? It means bug off. I'd rather be alone. Okay, suit yourself, sister, if that's the way you want it. That's the way I want it. 
Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we've uh, made an emergency stop. There'll be no one boarding the train, and with the exception of the lady we have to get to the hospital, no one will leave it. Uh, there's a bad storm out there, and we'll be pulling out first chance we get, because we're running late. How long do you think we're going to have to hang around this whistle stop? I don't know, until they get the nurse day into a hospital, I guess. Hmm. What's going to happen to the old lady she was taking care of? Oh, Mr. Thorpe said he'd look after her. Who's Thorpe? Well, that guy who came over when you were helping to get the nurse back on the seat. The one who got off with the conductor and the guys with the stretcher? Yeah. Yeah. Suitcase Sam. No, I think I think he said his name was Hen... What do you mean, Suitcase Sam? Oh, it's just a name I gave him in my mind, like... Why? Hey, wait a minute. Who asked you to sit down? Me, myself? Uh, my name's Duke. What's yours? Linda Sna- Now, what's it to you? Well, does it hurt to know your name? Linda what? Goes both ways. Duke what? <laughs> okay, so, Linda Duke. <laughs> How come you call Mr. Thorpe Suitcase Sam? Oh, that. You ever notice the way he hangs on to his briefcase? Ever since he got on the train, no matter what he does, he never lets go. Helps out the old lady, lugs the briefcase. Goes off the train, it still goes along like, um, like it was chained to him. How come? Well, he has important papers in it. Money, I don't know. Why? This crummy old train. Headed for practically nowhere. Five of us in this coach, now that the nurse is gone. Ever stop to figure what brings us all here? No, I got my own problems. Sure. We got problems, all of us. Hey, who are you? I told you, Duke. A student of life. Well, what are you trying to say? There are five of us right here. We've got one thing in common. We're all on the lam. Running like hell from something or other. Okay, everyone. Uh, uh, we're uh, sorry for the delay. Uh, you'll be glad to know that the lady who was sick is in good hands. Uh, uh, by now, in spite of the weather, she's at the clinic uh, about to have her appendix removed and in A1 condition. So... We'll uh, be getting rolling again. Did you uh, hear what the conductor said, Mrs. Winston? Oh, yes. In spite of my age, my hearing is quite unimpaired. Tell me, is Nurse Brown all right? Well, I believe so. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Thorpe, just uh, collecting tickets. Uh, for the excitement for clean slip my mind. Oh, sure, conductor. Uh, here's mine. Uh, the other lady... Uh... Uh, oh, I got the two young people and her. Uh, just Mrs. Winsome's and the nurse left. Miss Brown put them right there on the back of the seat. That's right. Let's see. Huh. One way for you, I reckon. Return ticket for her. Should have gotten that to her. Well, how do you know the return isn't for me? Well... Or for Mr. Thorpe. Is it? Well, no. The uh, return trip was Miss Brown's, the, the nurse. Cozy, isn't it? Five of us left on the journey. All one-way tickets. They are, aren't they, Conductor? Why, uh, yes. <gasps> Why, what a night. I'd see anything out of this window. For all we know, we could be plunging straight into a void. No, well, I doubt it. As long as the train stays on the tracks, they do lead somewhere, you know. Do I? Do you? I wonder where? Skeffington Junction. That's where I'm headed. Are you sure? Hmm? I don't quite understand. I saw a play once about some people on an ocean liner traveling in a fog. And none of them really knew where they were going. Oh, yes. Outward bound. Oh, that's right. The whole point, you see, was that it didn't matter where they thought they were going. Because they were really all dead. <laughs> well, that ain't true about us, Mrs. Winsome. I can assure you, we're all very much alive. And there was a steward on the ship just like you. Do you know, Mr. Conductor, in this circumstance, that you are the very last one I would trust to tell me the whole truth? <laughs> We shouldn't pay too much attention to the vagaries of an old lady who is on the way to being institutionalized. Or should we? The passengers are an odd assortment of lost, unhappy people. What urges them towards Skeffington Junction? What is there for them? If indeed they ever reach it, and if they don't, what will be their ultimate destination? I shall return shortly with Act Two. This year, give Mom a gift she can appreciate long after Mother's Day is over. Like a name-brand kitchen appliance from True Value Hardware Stores. 
All right, Pat Summerall, to suggest you give her a Presto Fry Baby deep fryer. It deep fries one to two servings of fish, shrimp, chicken, or other fried foods in just minutes and just two cups of cooking oil. And the lid snaps on to store the oil for the next use. Or give Mom the Bun Drip Coffee Maker from True Badger Hardware Stores. It brews up to 48 ounces of coffee in under three minutes and heats water for soup, tea, or cocoa. And the Bun Drip Coffee Maker comes in white with an exclusive fruit cluster design available only on True Badger Hardware Stores' collection of name-brand kitchen appliances. This Mother's Day, give Mom a name-brand kitchen appliance like the Presto Fry Baby Deep Fryer or the Bun Drip Coffee Maker from participating True Value Hardware Stores. And remember that True Value is more than just a name. It's our way of doing business. The night is a blur of swirling snowflakes. The searchlights from the locomotive bombard the gloom. The rails gleam bright, leading the train surely towards its destination. Inside the first coach, our passengers are as we left them. But from the cold, wild night outside, phantoms have penetrated the interior warmth. And an old lady's voice has stirred in all our travelers the dead ashes of loss and desertion. Only Gus, the conductor, is left unaffected. We must be running very late, Conductor. Mm, lost pretty near an hour. Hmm. Can you estimate what time we might be getting at the Skeffington Junction? Uh, pretty hard to say, the way the weather's shaping up. Uh, you want me to go up forward and check? No, I wish you would. Yeah, I'll do that little thing. Mrs. Winsome? Yes? Uh, I just thought I'd like to kind of point out if, if we really had a, well, uh, like you say, a date with destiny, it, it sure wouldn't be hit or miss like this, would it? I wouldn't have thought so before. But now that you mention it, perhaps this is just the way it should be. Uh, well, I'll uh, get up on forward and talk to the engineer. That man is hiding something. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, hiding what? The truth. About what? I can't answer that. Oh, never mind. Am I to understand that you have taken over as my nurse? Oh, no, no, not at all. I just told Miss Brown, since she was sick, that uh, I would help you to get where you're going. To the funny farm. I beg pardon? Oh, don't try to be polite. That's the common term for it. Well, I don't buy the term or the qualification. You are on your way to a sanitarium. Highly qualified and recommended. All right, if you like it so much, do you want to take my place? Me? Why, why would I want to... Now, don't try to pull the wool over my eyes. You think I don't know of the signs of a man who wants to run from life? Hmm. You do, don't you? Hmm, perhaps. But that has nothing to do with you. Now, don't be too sure. Though I may come on strong, maybe I'm just as ready to run as you. The only thing is, never mind what you run from... Where is it you want to run to? Well, where do you? And it's not very interesting. Try me. All right. I had a wife mm -hmm. who was my whole life. And she died suddenly. The children were gone, long gone, involved in their own lives. And in my case, not interested in extending the line. You know, creating grandchildren, whatever you want to call it. And suddenly I... I don't know. I was up against a blank cliff end of the road. I did a complete flip-flop. No, you, you, you'll have to explain that for me. Maybe also for myself. You see, I was born poor. We were so poor that when I was eight, I was let out for adoption. I never knew my parents who died very young. It was only in the last years when I couldn't find roots with my children that I tried to go back and find them with my parents. Did you? No, not really. Just enough to make this last journey because I see it as the only place I'm wanted. I think you're very lucky to find any place you're wanted. Some of us are not so lucky. Mind if I sit down for a moment? Hmm? Oh, no, why not? But uh, what about your charge? Mrs. Winston is enjoying the kind of sleep that only the very young or the very old seem to be capable of. You sound a little bitter. I am. Well, I should be the last to criticize. So am I. Oh? What are you bitter about? Life and whatever prolongs it. 
this endless trip? Why do we have to just put put along? Well, it's a pretty wild storm out there. The train doesn't have to see where it's going. The tracks are laid out. It just has to go. That's why I picked it. To go where? Skeffington Junction. Mainly to anywhere I wasn't. I don't know how to answer that. Who asked you to? Just... Well, just the normal process of give and take between two human beings. Well, haven't we gotten to the time of life where that shouldn't be necessary? If you want to argue cases, why don't you consult them? Consult who? Those two. Those two so-called kids over there. Ask them about the state of the universe. They know it all. They have it all tabbed. Leaving the two of us just two outmoded nothings to cop out. <laughs> The faster, the better. No, wait, wait, just a minute. You... Ah, oh, forget it. <laughs> Ask a foolish question, you get a foolish answer. What's so foolish about my answers? Anytime any of us give up on living, wouldn't you say that it's foolish? No. Anyway, I'd have laid odds you'd be the first to understand. Me? Why? The things you said when you first intruded on my privacy. This whole crazy setup. What's a well-dressed, obviously successful businessman like yourself doing on a flea-bitten train like this to nowhere? I'm going to Skeffington Junction, aren't all of us? I don't know. There aren't any other stops between here and there. Well, then that must be where we're going. <laughs> don't tell me you have business there. Well, if it happens, I have. Don't you? Not really. This is a pleasure trip? That it is not. Well, Definitely not. Well, then why... Oh, call it a... Call it a stepping-off place? To where? That's a good question. Why don't you ask the others? Except poor little Mrs. Winsome. She knows where she's going. It really is the end of the line for her. Well, it might not be so bad for her. You're an optimist. And you? Since the roof of my world fell in, I expect only the worst. Now, look, Mrs. Conrad. You're a young woman. You lost a husband recently, all right. You'll weather the storm. You'll find a new life. I don't want a new world. I want the one I had. I just wish I was dead, since I might as well be. Well, that is a bit rugged, Mrs. Conrad. Well, that is the way I feel. It takes all kinds of women, I imagine, to make a world. My kind, or <laughs> maybe it's just me. My kind is symbiotic. Symbiotic? <laughs> Forgive me. I once was a biology major. Symbiosis is the living together of two different but mutually interdependent organisms. Take away one of them, and the other dies. Well, there couldn't be anything much different than man and woman, could there? But your husband... Oh, he's a survivor. He'll adapt. Not me. Without him, I'm dead. So, you're running away. Or towards... Toward what? Skeffington Junction... It's a miserable, scrubby little town, you know, except for the hotels. But it's a, a jumping-off point for one of the most glorious sights in the world. Those wild, cascading, plunging waters with the spindrift hanging in the air to condense in your hair like diamonds or pearls. <laughs> he said I was wearing a Juliet's cap. <laughs> I was in Fairyland or Camelot or you pick your own heaven on earth. And it never changed till... <sighs> till it changed. I spent my honeymoon in Skeffington Junction. Began my whole life there. So did I. I was born there. Is that why you're going back? More or less. To try to find a new life? No, that isn't possible for me. But it could be for you. Oh, no way. I'm just going there to say goodbye. Mrs. Conrad, forgive me, but I... Look, Mr. Thorpe, if you have an urge to save a life, forget the two you've squandered yourself on so far. The two? Mrs. Winsome and me. Why don't you concentrate on the really lost? I, I, I don't know quite what you mean. Another of my failures was my children. Not so much unlike those two... Why do you suppose they're going to Skeffington Junction? Well, I wouldn't have the least notion. Oh, <laughs> you are a very persuasive man. If you have this missionary urge, go save a couple of souls young enough to 
maybe make a difference in the eternal balance. Oh, you misunderstand me, Mrs. Conrad. I'm the last person to have any missionary urges. In my own way, I'm just as dead as you profess to be. Everything's fine, Linda, baby. Don't move. I fell asleep. Who didn't? I guess I was like all over you. Yeah, I guess. We made out. Mm, you went away somewhere. Uh, yeah. You know, like uh, when you got to... Um... Mm, was that all? Well, on the way back, I made a stopover. Mm, what? El Cubo with a briefcase. He was zonked out, and the briefcase was sitting right beside him. So? So, I checked it. It wasn't locked. I took a peek. What am I supposed to say? Oh, don't you want to know what was in it? All right. What? Money. Dough. Wrapped, like, from a bank. Must be a hundred, two hundred thousand, maybe. I don't know. So? So, it's a lot of bread. That isn't ours. Or anyone's, except, like, uh, who has it? Are you talking about stealing it? Oh, come on. What steal? Nobody owns nothing. It's all up for grabs. I don't get you. I say you do. I think you're just as funky as I am, only you don't want to face up. Oh, I don't get you. Punk, baby. Punk all the way. I don't know what you're talking about. What's punk? I'll lay it out for you. I'm me, and I don't give a damn for nothing, nobody, no way. I am punk. <laughs> Are you all right? Oh, yes. I, I just hurt my arm a little. It's nothing. You better look at Mrs. Winston. Mrs. Winston, are you all right? Mrs. Winston. Ladies and gentlemen, I apologize for the suddenness of our stop, but uh, we've uh, just encountered high snow drifts blocking the track. It's, it's doubtful we can continue on towards Kettington Junction. Now, we are sending for additional equipment to take us back as far as we have to go to find accommodations to wait out the storm. So, please, please, be patient. Uh, we may be here for a considerable time while we try to figure out the best way out for all of us. The best way out for all of us. An old lady who is being railroaded into an old folks' home against her will. A woman who feels her life is already over. A man who has turned from the living to the dead. A self-confessed punk who cares about nothing but himself. And a young girl whose secret is still locked behind two dark and frightened eyes. What is the best way out for all of these? I shall return shortly with Act Three. Maybe you've got a neighbor who just bought a new Electra, and he's gotten so smug and self-satisfied lately, you can't stand it. Well, look at it this way. If you had just gotten a car with all the luxury and prestige of Electra, and a trim European-like design that makes it easier than you might imagine to park and maneuver in city traffic, wouldn't you be a little insufferable for a while? We thought so. The new Electra, at your Buick dealers now. <laughs> attempting to dig out the huge engine from the snowdrift into which it had burrowed to an accidental halt. The air in the front coach is growing cold. The two young people are huddled together, sharing his goose-down parka. Henry Thorpe stands, beating his hands across his chest, while Mrs. Conrad snugs into his overcoat. Further back in the car, little Mrs. Winsome is two bright button eyes gleaming out from a mound of stray clothing wound about her. Hey, this is kind of kicks, huh? Oh, glad you think so. Freezing to death. Mm. Oh. Cozying up under a blanket. Now, don't get an idea. Ah, oh, come on. Oh. And then what's the big cold shoulder? You're wasting your time. I wouldn't trust you any far and I can throw you. You're not my type. Hmm? Who said it takes one to know one? Well, that was different. How different? I just meant you were running out on something. Okay. Okay, suppose I am. Hmm, must be your conscience is troubling you. Hey, don't give me that square talk. How come you, of all people, figure I have to be wrong? Me, of all people? Oh, no luck, Duke, or whatever your name is. 
First, I don't care what put you on the road. And second, I... Look, it was nothing all that terrible. Just everything backed up. I was flunking out in another college, which was stale news. But it meant the usual go-round with my parents, and I'd had it. So I cut out. Got enough bread to see me through to Canada, and then I can move in with the family. Can? Yeah, yeah, it's a, uh, what do you call it, a commune. You? In a commune? Ah. I don't believe it. Look, it's where you can let everything loose, flow oh. free. Some your nose at the establishment. Oh, come on, isn't the family just another kind of commitment? Well, all right, so what if it is? It's one that I picked. Not one I was stuck with. Hey, it's a good life. You ought to dig it, too. Doesn't it uh, grab you? I don't know. It's something I never even thought about. Can just anybody join us? If you want to make the commitment. Uh, hey, are you putting me on? No, no, why would you think that? Well, I had the notion right off on the first that maybe you were headed for the family, too. Oh, no, this is the first I ever heard of that. Well, then where are you headed? You wouldn't want to hear. Try me. Well, I, I, I don't want to put it into words. Talk to me, Linda. You know you want to talk to somebody. Oh, yeah, somebody. <laughs> Anybody. Well, my father. Well, he died a long time ago. And four years ago, my mother married again. I was 14. The guy, I, the man she married didn't want me. I just came along with the deal. Oh, he treats my mom all right. But the guy's a... He's a dog. <laughs> he slapped me around plenty when my mother didn't know. Later, she didn't care after she started drinking. <laughs> well, up until then, I could take it. But suddenly I was 18, and the only way was out. But out where? You got relatives in Skeffington Junction? <laughs> You're going to laugh at this. But, um, have you ever heard of a pen pal? Uh, oh, you mean like you get a name and address and write and he writes back and all that? Mm-hmm. No, like that. Sometimes when the walls close in on you, you got to find a new door out or a window to escape. Well, anyway, I wrote this guy nearly two years ago. He's a farmer and he lives two hours out of Skeffington Junction. He's old enough to be my father, but... He never had a wife, so, okay, I never had a father. He was the only way out. Well, that's where I'm headed. Hey, that is crazy, throwing yourself away. Are you any better? What do you think you're doing? Oh, I uh, sure hope you folks are making out. Uh, ain't got much to report. Uh, we're still waiting for the relief engine that's on its way. We're going to try to keep you as warm as we can till then, but you are going to have to help. Uh, how you kids doing? Oh, we're, we're making our eyes. Good. Uh, uh, oh, Mr. Thorpe, you look pretty cold. Uh, I'm all right. Well, he isn't, really. He gave me his coat to keep me from freezing. Well, uh, I got an extra coat here. You, you better climb into it, sir. Well, oh, maybe Mrs. Winsome could use it. I think you need it more. Take it, Henry. I, I could use it for just a moment or two if I could be sure that... Uh, why don't you let me sit with the old lady for a spell, uh, just come out from the engine room and... Oh, what, what is it? Well, uh, 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 it's, uh, it's all right, folks. I just take it easy. No cause for alarm. It's uh, just the new locomotive hooked up with us at last. Ah, oh, it's a dream of getting warm again, Mr. Conductor. We're going back, aren't we? We are. Yes, in our own ways, none of us here were all that anxious to get to Skeppington Junction this time around. Where will we end up? Mm, I don't rightly know. I doubt if it'll be Lambert's. The town was all sewed up with this weather when we stopped there a while ago. We might have to chase our tails back to where we began. Oh, dear. That wouldn't really solve anything, would it, Mr. Oh, I am so sorry. I don't know your name. <laughs> Gus is pretty near all I ever use. But you must have another name. Mm, never had any real use for it except uh, income tax and the like. Uh, summers, it is. <laughs> it's not much of a name in weather like this. <laughs> summers. Oh, I find it a very nice name. And a cheerful one. Especially in the condition we all find ourselves. Do you, ma'am? Why? Well, 
I could just have him if he'd been called Winter. <laughs> Might have been better if I had. <laughs> what? Uh, this extra little jaunt, Mrs. Winston. You know it as well as me. It's only a... Uh... What do you call it when a fellow that's condemned to die gets word from the governor or the king? Uh, or the... Reprieve. Oh, yeah, that, that's it, reprieve. But it ain't going to last long. I don't quite understand. No. You and me, we're in the same boat, huh? Nobody wants us anymore. I'm 65. The boom falls. I got to retire. There goes my whole life. I never had nothing but the railroad. Take that away. I'm only waiting out the years. That is my case entirely. We are both in the same boat. Well, uh, oh, uh, Mr. Thorpe, uh, anything I can do? No, no, Gus. Stay where you are. I, uh, just had a sudden urge for a cigar. I'm going out to the platform to indulge it. Uh, how is Mrs. Conway? Well, she's fast asleep. I didn't want to disturb her. I don't think anyone else should. Uh, Gus, when do you think we'll be stopping? Well, not this side of the Guzman Bridge. Mm. How long is that? Well, we should be crossing in another two, three minutes. Oh, fine. Uh, now, if you'll excuse me. Oh, such a pity. Hmm? That nice man without a wife. Lonely. And there's a woman just made to order for him. Beg pardon? The lady who is sound asleep. Divorced. Lonely as him. Mm. You'd like to see them together? It would be nice. Uh, but not reasonable, Mrs. Winsome. Any more reasonable than these two kids who are coming this way. Now, what do you suppose they want? Hey, uh, conductor, uh, uh, it's getting kind of steamy in here. Okay, if we go out on the platform for a breath of air? I hope you don't mind. Oh, no, no, of course not. You can have a little visit with Mr. Thorpe. He's out there having a cigar. Oh, cheer up. Neither of us smoke. Uh, we'll leave you some air to breathe. That was sweet. What? Thinking of the non-smokers. Maybe there's some hope for you after all. Like how? Maybe you're not all punk. Uh, you want to get the door? Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, hi, Mr. Thorpe. Uh, you mind if we join you here on the platform? No, not at all. If you don't mind the cigar. Uh, Linda? No, Mama. We've been so cooped up. <laughs> Can we get some real fresh air? Well, we could crack the outside door open just a piece, okay? Oh, solid. Here, let me help. Oh, no problem. There we are. Except, where are we, really? Well, the conductor said we should be crossing the river and... Oh, yeah, I guess we're on the bridge now. It's been a strange trip, hasn't it? Yeah. One I don't care ever to take again. <laughs> or me. I don't know if I can agree. Oh, hang on for your lives. The, the bridge gave way. What? Oh. We're hanging on the edge by a thread. I have the door open. Yes. Jump. No. Jump at your only chance. No. jumped just in time to make the snowbank, then oh. our car got pulled down with the rest. Yeah, and, and the old lady, the conductor, Mrs. W whatever her name was. Yeah, gone. Oh, my. Wiped out. Oh, too. I'll tell you, Linda, it, it makes you sit up and take a new look. I, I just sat oh. out. Oh. Oh. Hey, oh. how's Mr. Thorpe? I don't know. Well, he, he, he's alive. Oh. Uh, sir? Oh. Sir, you all right? Something. Something ha happened to my to my back oh. when we jumped. Is, is there anything we can do to help? No, no, no. Don't don't try to move me. Oh. This way, this moment, it doesn't hurt too much. So we've got to get you out of here. Why? You want me as another statistic? Forget it. Oh, you know that's not what we want. I know, Linda. But I'm long past caring what you want from me. It's what I want from you. That's important. 
I want you both as another statistic. Uh, what? Six of us. That we know of, six of us on that train. Four of us ready and com- composed to die. But not, not you, we, sir. We won't mention the disease, but it was progressing so fast. I would have been destroyed in weeks. All the others had no real future, like me, except, except you two. And that is a miracle, that you are here. I, uh, uh, I, I had a, a briefcase somewhere. Yes, yeah, it's here. Lucky you always carries it with you, the, the one with the money. Oh, I'm, I'm glad that you... That you know what it contains. No, we, we don't want the money. Just tell us where you... Don't say you don't want it. My own children are long ago taken care of. This, uh... This money is from a safe deposit box. No one knows of it but me. What did you mean it for? Well, once I thought I would build a mausoleum for my parents who were buried in a pauper's grave. You see, that's where I was taking it. Die myself and lie with them. Uh, now, I know that, that that was stupid and I want... No. Uh, yes, I, you want? I want this money to be for the young and for the future. I leave it to you to use as you see best fit. Who is he? I guess... what he said. You mean we take it? We take it and use it for things that he might have wanted it used for. I doubt if he'd have okayed the punk psychology. Oh, come on. I I don't mean it like that. Well, then how do we use it? There'll be a way of... As long as it helps some young people, I... I don't guess he'd fault us too much. Us? Hey... I got a date with a man who wants to marry me. You've got a date with a man who wants to use you. We've got a better date. We? Okay. Us. With a hundred thousand bucks and the memory of this trip, of how wrong we could have gone, how can we lose? Are you propositioning me again? I'm trying to make you an offer you can't refuse. In everyone's life, there is a Skettington Junction. That particular private place where, when life becomes too much to bear, you can run and jump off, or perhaps just bury your head in the sand. Of course, there is no such place in reality. For life itself ordains the pattern we must follow and the end that waits for us. Only the living have that second chance to make changes. So... Make them while you can. I'll be back shortly. I have nothing more to say about our story, except that I hope, as you, the young people made good use of the gift of both money and time. And a quote from an old poem... Tis here, they say, the journey ends, and little doubt it must be so. But, as I tell my bestest friends, I hate to go. Our cast included Norman Rose, Carol Titel, E.V. Juster, and Russell Horton. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.